Alien artifacts in Space Station 14 are one of the primary sources of research points for science. Artifacts are not too hard to work with, but they can be somewhat difficult to understand fully. This video aims to help new science players and even advanced science players. The very basics of an artifact is simple. You just need an analysis console, you need an artifact, and you need an artifact analyzer. All you have to do is put the artifact on the pad, you come to the console, you scan it, and there's a few th bits of information here. The node ID is just what ID it is currently on. You can print out this ID, and if you examine it, it'll be node 19,945. Press E on it to see exactly what the computer has printed out. Inside science lockers, like so, you will spawn with a node scanner. And if you use the node scanner on an artifact, it will tell you what node you are on. And this is really helpful because once you start advancing artifacts, sometimes you need to reactivate old stimulus. And then if you have this node scanner and you keep careful track of your nodes, you will essentially be able to fast track the research speed. This is how people max out science research very easily, even without outside help. So this artifact is depth zero. It is the beginning of an artifact that has not automatically activated. The stimulus of sonic vibrations, I'm not too worried about this. Uh, you can figure this out for yourself. Edges too. This is where people get confused. I will show a graph on screen. I don't know who made the graph, but it's very helpful. And whoever made it, thank you very much. So basically, we're at the very bottom of a tree. And there are two edges. That means they are two branches from the beginning node. I can go to depth one, and that could be a dead end. Or the other depth one can keep going. And only what we're going to find out is if we... Just activate the stimulus. All you have to do for sonic vibrations is play an instrument near it. And it creates monkeys, which is really useful. And all we can do at this point now is rescan and wait. And while you wait, you can always extract it. And you can use your node scanner to figure out the new node ID. It doesn't really help you at the moment because uh, we don't know what that node means, but you can just confirm that it did indeed move on to a different node, just in case you are not entirely sure if it did move on. So I'll be back once it scans. We have reached the next node, and as we can re-examine, it is depth 1, edge 3. So that means that this artifact is actually a least complex. There are three rarities of artifacts. They're simple, medium, and complex. And... Typically, if you're already at this stage, it's pretty much a complex artifact, which is typically the best ones. They're also the most dangerous. The complex ones will give you tons of points if you stick with them. So I advise you at this point to print out the report, just so you know what nodes do what. And since this is depth 1, that means we can, we can have a chance of going back down to depth 0, or we can end up going towards depth 2. And then from those edges, we can either go up or they could be dead ends. Again, the only way to know is if we should keep going. So I just have to activate mag boots near it for this one. And again, at this point, the only thing we can do is extract the points and scan, and we must wait again. So we have hit another node once again, and this is a dead end. It is depth to edge one, meaning the only place we can go back is to edge one. But due to our careful printing of the nodes, we can categorize how to do this very easily. So let me just activate it. Broke the glass nearby. It kind of sucks. But we could rescan it. And as we can see, uh, the magnetic. We have the mag boots left on. So we basically just accidentally reactivated it several times. I kind of ruined what I was planning on doing. I was going to show you that through pa careful paper keeping, you would absolutely be able to know exactly what node you were on. But I, the previous node was the same stimulus. So it auto activated. And now what we should do before doing anything is scan it. We're on node 311, and that is not any node we know about, so we must rescan, and we can extract. While I'm here, you are not always bound to scanning. If salvage is mining, they will most likely bring you these artifact fragments. These are the greatest things a scientist could ever have. All you need is a beaker. And depending on the map, some maps already have grinders. If not, you can go ask a chef to let you grind up artifacts, or you can just research the respective technology. You simply juice the artifact fragments, and each artifact fragment gives 10 artifexium. You can put it in a spray bottle, which you can craft at a lathe, and make sure you set the transfer amount to 5 units. 
This essentially lets you cheat and bypass any stimulus because as soon as you spray an artifact, it will instantly activate it. If I'm not mistaken, I believe most science labs in the game uh, feature bomb suits, but this station does not. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to have the RD do this. The research director, this research director has an experimental research hard suit, and this hard suit features 90% explosion resistance and a bunch of other resistances. It's also completely, it's pretty much completely immune to radiation as well. So that is obviously very important. And as you can see, we are on depth three, edge one, again, another dead end, but the stimulus is a level depth three environmental disruption, which could be very dangerous. And the stimulation is radiation, which is not always easy to get. However, due to science being, or due to salvage being our best friends, they have given us artifexium in a spray bottle. So all you have to do is take your spray bottle with the artifexium and spray it. And we got lucky. It didn't harm us. And I also made a mistake. I forgot to print off the node. And that was 311. So now we know. We now have four nodes fully discovered. We can extract. And it seemed to have auto activated again. So let me rescan it. We're on 40. See, now that we know that's on 40, we can instantly reactivate it to not waste our time. 40 is again just magnetic waves. So let me just. Turn the boots on and off. Now we can scan again. 614. We do not know what 614 does. Oh, yes, we do, actually. This is why you keep track. Again, just magnetic waves. And now we are on... 40. We know that one. That is, again, magnetic waves. This is a very interesting artifact. It's basically just printing resources. 61... Back to magnetic waves. Oh, we broke all the damn windows now. 4-0. 1-9. Sonic vibrations. As you can see, very careful record keeping can make science very, very productive very quickly. And this is like the base level of productivity. 7-4, now we're on a new one. Now we go back to the basics. We rescan and extract. So we have reached a new branch, and it is node 7726, uh, so we want to print that out. It is physical trauma. Unfortunately, it's only a depth one, but that means it will be safe relatively when it activates, and we have a chance of going back down to depth zero, which we don't want, or we can keep going up to depth two on a new branch. And physical trauma is also a simple one. Just hit it. And at this level of depth, you normally don't have to do much damage. Sometimes you do have to spend a little bit of time hitting it. There we go. And just like before, use a node scanner. 2-0. We have successfully gone up the branch. And again, must just rescan and re-extract. And during this time, I've only spent maybe 10 minutes in here. We have gained 50,000 points, which is quite a lot. And this is with one artifact and just using basic methodology. If you have an anomaly running at the same time as this, which you hopefully should as a science team, you can get a lot done very quickly. And we haven't even hit any of the higher depths, which give more points, and I will keep going until we get there. One of your goals should be, as a scientist, to continue your research, is to get abnormal artifact manipulation. This lets you get a traversal distorter machine board. Obviously, I have not quite got enough research to get it yet, but I'm just going to cheat real quick and spawn it in. So what you do with the traversal machine uh, distorter is you simply just drag it underneath the... You put it on top of the artifact analyzer, and if you left click on it, you can set it out or in. Out means that you're going to... It's going to try to go deeper into the depths, which is typically what you will want. So now that we're on depth to edge four... There's one way back and three ways forward. So we're going to be forcing it outwards. And again, it's physical trauma, so this is rather simple. Also, you're going to want to print this out. I can't remember if I printed it out. I may have. Uh, I did not. So it's useful to keep this node in track. And again, since we have it on out, we are forcing it to go deeper into the depths, which will get us more points. And it 
went in the freaking space. So we're going to have to go get that. We have recovered it. And now we are node 18. We do not have that node discovered. And as you know, we must scan. Or you can always just brave it and start spraying it. But that is obviously really dangerous. I don't think I need to explain that exactly. I will do one more node just to make it very clear how good record keeping can massively increase your speed of researching. And then I will show you what the truly insane do. Alright, this is another unfortunate depth. Depth 3, edge 1, means the only way we can go is back. So again, good record keeping will help out a lot here. Uh, I don't feel like hooking up the plasma purely just because I don't want to for this video. So I'm just going to spray it. I can't spray it because uh, I sprayed too much artifactium. So we could just always go back, grind up some more. You could always just fill up the bottle more than this anyway. But I think hopefully showing it slowly at a time will make it uh, easier to understand. So let me just spray it. It just created... Blue space manipulators and blue space capacitors, which is awesome. And that brings me to another point. You want to massively speed up your research. Well, let me examine the node. We're at 2-0. I know we've done that one. Yeah, 2-0, so physical trauma. We could just go back to hitting it, uh, but I'm done showing how to do this. I think this should make it pretty clear. Another thing you can do to massively speed up your research, then you crowbar it. Then you crowbar it again, and you just examine what parts are inside of it. I mean, once you know, you know. But this uses one capacitor and three manipulators. So we can put the machine board back in, and we could put in two manipulators of the blue space variety, and the one blue space... Oh, it's a matter bin, unfortunately. I didn't pay attention to that. So we just have to put the manipulator or the capacitor back in. You could always just print out better parts, obviously. Instructions complete. And just by putting in these new parts, we have sped up our analysis duration by 43%, which is obviously significant. And just put it back into here, and your lab is good to go. Only thing that sucks is when uh, this blows up, you're going to lose them. Oops, I uh, anchored the wrong thing. Definitely helps to anchor the right things. And if we just... We hook it back up with a multi-tool, like so. Put the artifact on it. Look how fast it scans now. It only takes 33 seconds with an upgrade. Anyways, I'm going to move on to the truly unhinged strategy. What you can do is you take all the artifact fragments... And you want to make as many as you can while still having enough to keep spraying. So in this case, there's 13... I will just make three alien artifacts. Which, these always make the handheld variety. Well, that one just auto-activated. Thank you. And you're just going to want to get a locker or something. Like so. And put them in there. And we're going to want to grind up some more artifexium. which we can do with the last fragment. You will often get more fragments than this and get more artifacts than this, but this is just a very small scale example. So we take this into this room. It's actually better to not do it where your pad's at because uh, artifacts can have interesting results. And you just want to stack all of the artifacts together. And it doesn't really matter if there's shit in the room. You can just leave it like that. And drag in every artifact you have. Because spray will go through all of them. And I will just spray it once. This could kill me. But it might not. No, nope, we're alright. Well, it's, it's always a little scary. But they will often chain react on each other. And this is in the wall. Which you'd have to deconstruct this. But I'm just going to cheat. And we have now sprayed five artifacts. And made a ton of stuff. And with this many artifacts, you can always just start testing things. Like, I played the sound wave, it didn't work. I could pull out the mag boots to see. And yeah, there we go. We managed to activate another one by doing that. When you have this many artifacts in a close proximity, you can always just try testing the various uh, methods of 
research, and I hope this makes sense. So, like, I could just kill this monkey now. And the more artifacts you have, the more likely you are to chain react, activating them. But if I just show you how many points this makes with only five artifacts in a single spray, it's pretty intense. And with more artifact fragments, more artifacts, you can basically finish all of research in, I don't know, 30 minutes. It does not take that long. Well, none of them were of that variety. So now what you do is you... Oops, I should probably... Uh, I didn't realize the other door is open. Let me close that. Real simple. Now you just take every single artifact at a time and scan them. And with the handheld ones, it's really easy because you can just put them in your inventory and in both hands. I could transport all three like this. And get that out of there. As you can see, you don't even have to waste time scanning them. We just wanted to get the points out of them. Oops, I accidentally clicked scan. Keep extracting them. And with just five artifacts with one spray, and obviously we worked on the one for quite a bit. We will move this into there. Let's see how many points we just made. With five artifacts and one spray and a little bit of manipulation, we got 77,000 points from one single spray. And that would basically let us finish tier three. And we have successfully researched everything in Experimental. And just to keep going for fun, we got quite a bit of Industrial as well. And that is all achievable with just one person with decent methodology and organization. Science is, I guess, funnily enough, a department you want to stay very organized in. And if you want to see just how crazy this gets, I could just take all the artifacts and just... It's fine. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Science is meant to hurt. It's meant to hurt. So we made, we made two anomalies. <laughs> so uh, that's something. And... Let's just, uh, the one teleported away, so we'd have to go find that one again. I'm still burning, it's fine. Science is meant to be a little painful. Okay, we have just sprayed the artifacts quite a bit. And just to conclude this video, we got another 80,000 points and one of them disappeared. You can max out research with within, I'd say, 30 to 40 minutes with just artifacts if you get slightly lucky because you need complex artifacts and salvage is working with you. That's all I got for now. Thank you for watching.